The epistle lesson is taken from the second book of Timothy, chapter 3. <clears throat> but as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from, who you, from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be prof proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message. Be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine but have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. Here ends the reading of the epistle. Prior to our scripture reading, earlier in chapter 17, the Pharisees asked Jesus when the kingdom of God was coming and where the Messiah and his people will be located. And he answered, it is not coming with things that can be observed, for in fact the realm of God is among you. Then he spoke to his disciples to prepare them. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says, and will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them, and yet when the human one comes, Will he find faith on earth? Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Holy wisdom, holy word. Pray always and do not lose heart. That's how the opening reads to this parable. Some may hear these words bringing comfort, especially if one is feeling discouraged, lost, and near despair. Some may find them encouraging to those trying to bring about a change that benefits those who are suffering or need some kind of vindication. At first reading the parable, we may bring a little bit of laughter when we hear that the persistent the persistent woman wears the judge out. If we remember, however, that she was without protection, without status, about to end up homeless, 
with no food stamps, nothing available to her, we might hear her as not pleading, but as demanding. Her life depends on it. Without vindication, she will die. It is life and death. She is not to be dismissed and labeled an ag, which I've heard many sermons on that one, because her voice is one that is desperate, yet strong enough to confront a judge. Even an unjust judge would give in if confronted with that consistent behavior. How many of us have prayed for a job when we were broke or we didn't see anything in sight? Maybe we were going to go under. A birth to go right, perhaps where there were some complications or just out of fear that there might be. A home to live in or some kind of shelter. A sick, one lo a sick loved one to be healed. How many of us have ever felt like our prayers weren't answered? What then? What then happens in our relationship with God? Do we distance ourselves from the disappointment? Come to expect less from God? That's what Jesus questions. Will God find faith here on earth when the human one comes? Will the faithful be found? Those who have trusted in God's justice and mercy, when our prayers are answered, is there a moment of joy and then at some point do we just take it for granted? Or do we find ways to give thanks and continue to cherish and grow our relationship with God? Like the disciples, we too are called to have faith, to trust in God and make our hearts known to God. If companies like McDonald's and many others now can sign on just conditions and practices we, for their workers, we may see something of God's spirit at work in and through those who stand up for their own dignity and worth and take on those who have that power in their lives. So praying always and not losing heart is about faith. It isn't about pleading with God for whatever we want and desire. As several TV evangelists say, God wants us to have everything that we want. All we need to do is pray. And if we don't get it, it just means we haven't prayed correctly. Our God, our relationship with God isn't about consumerism. As I may have said before, God isn't an ATM machine providing all of our wants. Nor is it about death and sacrifices be it in war, in relationships, or in the home with which we practice, which was the practice of the temple cult of the time, offering the firstborn or the virgin or young daughter, or the animal that could feed their family and neighbors. Jesus' words to the disciples and throughout his teaching present a new understanding of God as one who wants our honesty, our love and relationship and a relationship that respects justice towards our neighbor. Jesus' words make a difference and are life-changing. I was reading a theological article by Margaret Ernst where she stated that Reformed theology, John Calvin to be particular, has always emphasized that we cannot separate who God is and what God does from who we are and what we are called to do. God's sovereignty over all areas of our life does not allow for a disconnect of private and public faith and life. It does not allow for a disconnect of private and public faith and life. Given that Jesus so often reverses the given norms and understandings of the religious and the culture, our parable may be seen from another perspective. God is unlike the judge and more like the woman seeking vindication. That would reverse 
persisting against injustice, injustice when we stand for just principles. It is God working in and through us when we challenge the powers and the principalities that enslave human beings, use and demean people as somehow less human, less like ourselves, as objects, as resources for the commodities of one person, one corporation, one privileged nation. God, too, longs for justice day and night, loves us day and night, believes in us day and night, seeks us out for communion. We might ask then, why is there so much injustice? Why hasn't God intervened, made magic, and taken it away? Surely there are millions of people crying to God to act. Jesus didn't answer the Pharisees directly. Rather, he always pointed them to a larger orientation, to see a bigger picture. We, as part of the Reformed faith, might instead turn this around on ourselves and say, we are called to be disciples. We are free to choose, to co-create, to evolve in our trust and faith in the divine. We can evolve and grow in our trust and our faith in the nature, in our divine nature, in and around us. To pray always and not lose heart can also lead to not losing hope. Trusting in the Spirit of God to guide us and lead us to act in ways that lift up, that build up relationships in our congregation, in our community, and society. Taking that small something that we glimpse of this God of justice, of love, integrating it into our lives and living it out. Somehow, I've said this before, God and we are in this together. You and I are in this together. The Spirit of God working through us as we come to care about those others who seem far away, who seem to be strangers, and to care about one another. This is how faith is, not just a pleading with God, but trusting God as we hear ourselves praying every week together in the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not just in heaven someday, but on earth as it is in heaven. And it's not God just swooping down and zapping. It's us. It's we. Remember, God was faithful to the people. Jesus did come again to the disciples, and we celebrate that in the Easter season. Christians enact the revelation, the words and the deeds, teachings and healings of Jesus every week, every day of our lives. Praying without losing heart is about trusting God and involves our every word and our every action. And my heavens, we, we, it isn't that we don't make mistakes, or that we don't always live up to that, but that that's our goal, that's our, that's our life's work. In telling the parable of the unjust judge having relented, Jesus goes on to say, will not God grant more to those who have been faithful, those who have trusted, those who have taken that path, those who have trusted God in the here and now, don't we experience something immediately when we trust, right? Don't we feel wonderful when we trust another person? When we have faith in one another, isn't there an excitement that comes from that? An honoring of the value of another, a kindness toward the other, a growing in understanding right here on earth. And friends, you have been through a lot these last years. This is so important that you, that I, that we trust one another, that we come together. Jesus goes on to say, yet when the human one comes, will she or he find faith on earth? 
We don't just stop or take on a been there, done that attitude about those we care about, about justice. It isn't about gathering or doing issues. People aren't just issues. People, we human beings, are God's creations, those we are in relationship with, learning from, and blessed to have in our lives. As we are reminded in the story that, of Jesus healing 10 lepers, they all went off, business as usual. It only one came back to give thanks, and that was the Samaritan. Once healed, once vindicated, a person then has the opportunity to give thanks to God, draw closer in trust, and share what they've come to know and understand about themselves and those who, that would devalue another. Thus, to be witnesses to the Spirit of God at work in our lives, in our hearts, on earth, as it is in heaven. We don't always get the things we want or receive an in intervention to take away our troubles or our pain or that of a loved one. When we hear the things that people are doing to their neighbors, killing, abuses of all kinds, preying on the, the vulnerable, and I could go on with that, we may wonder, where is God? And it's easy to say, God is with us. Perhaps another way to hear that is God is with us. Us, we who can choose to respond. We who can help stop the killings. We who can bring comfort to those who are in pain. We who can seek justice for those who are being taken advantage of. God is with us to act as the woman seeking vindication, justice, and being put right in relationship to others, valued. Let us pray. O oh God, empower us. Help us to see in the persistent woman you persisting, a model for us to persist in the face of people who are hard-hearted or who are unaware in so many ways. Give us your love and your faith to act. Oh, we know that you already do love us and that you already want for us an increase in the blessings of your relationship. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.